there was news when we first got, got here that the clicker wasn't clicking. So I'm really glad that the clicker clicks now. No one wants an unclicky clicker. Anyway, hi. How are you? I have a question to start out. How many of you are artists or aspiring artists or things of that nature? Okay, very cool, very cool. It's good to know, you know, I, I'm not really sure who I'm talking to, but uh, um, so yeah, I do those things. Um, pretty much uh, sums it up, I suppose. The other stuff or part, that, that, that's too much. I only have six minutes, but um, I'm a musician, um, primarily in Kansas City, although I'll go anywhere, um, pretty much with anybody, because I really like what I do. I think that that's kind of an overlooked thing in the arts world or the music world is, you know, there's the idea of the starving artist or whatever. It's like, well, they just do it and then they're grumpy all the time because they don't make any money. I mean, I really love being a musician. I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Maybe if I was like Gary Winogrand or something, but um, I would do street photography, but there's not a lot of money in that. I'd probably be more grumpy. So I really love what I do. I like talking about it. I do all those things. We'll get into them a little bit later. Um, so. The idea of a musician, a professional musician, this is uh, one, of the, one of the most interesting things to present to people. Not to present, just to, to tell them casually in conversation. If you're at like the proverbial cocktail party where everybody's like walking around and you know, hey, how are you? And what do you do? I really don't like to say musician a lot because people think, oh, you're a musician. What do you really do? This is actually what I really do. Um, and so in order to do this for me, and I think for any kind of artist, you have to find your niche. You have to find what it is that makes you marketable, what it is that you are good at. And so for me, it ends up being wearing kind of a lot of hats. Uh, as a solo artist, I play the trumpet. Um, I'm, I'm a band leader. I'm a freelancer. Um, like, like she said earlier, um, but I play the trumpet. The trumpet's not bass or the drums or a piano. Like I'm, I'm not uh, getting called for a lot of gigs because most people don't go, oh, you know what I really need? I need a trumpet. That's, that's like Easter, you know? That's pretty much what you get, Easter or, or you know, some mariachi music or something, which is great. Both of those are fine. Um, that has been sort of a blessing in disguise for me because I've had to hustle my own work from pretty much the start. Um, luckily in Kansas City, it's one of the few cities in the world where you can be a jazz musician and live in a home and support yourself and your people. Um, so that's great, but it's not like the phone's you know, ringing off of the uh, proverbial hook all of the time. So I have to go out and find my own work um, and that's, that's good. It's good to learn how to hustle, uh, I suppose. Even though I hate the word hustle, it seems it's so... Um, I'm a composer, I'm an arranger. Those things get you less work than just being a trumpet player. Um, because the thing is, people, people need arrangements in the jazz world, big band. Um, David Bassey is here with us, you know, if he's gonna sing with a, with a jazz orchestra, a big band, 17 people probably shouldn't just make up what they're playing behind him. It would sound cacophonous and awful. So people like David, um, instrumentalists that, that, are, that are working, uh, maybe soloing in front of an ensemble, the need for arranged music is high. The amount of money you get off of the arrangements is low. Um, so you have to be creative with, with how you end up sort of making that part of your career pie chart. Um, we can talk about that later, but that's uh, it's just, it, it's a, uh, it's not a frustration, it's a challenge. That's a euphemism for frustration. Um, but, you know, I was just having coffee with, uh, with a friend of mine, a really great younger saxophone player that just moved to town, Brandon Wilkins, who I think did a chart for you, David. I think, maybe. Um, fantastic musician. He's like 13 years old or something, or 25 or something. And, um, 
I mean, not that, not that I'm ancient, but like this kid is like, he doesn't have any wrinkles yet. It's like, what? So, um, so we had coffee and we were talking about, he was like, how do I make money writing big band music? And I was like, <laughs> you know, you don't. Um, you can, um, but just giving him the idea, he was like, well, I don't want to write anything. It'll take me 40 hours to write this one arrangement, which is way too many hours. Um, I, I don't want to you know, do these for less than $1,000. And I was like, man, OK, well, then you have to make a decision. Are you going to hone your craft and write things and only when you get $1,000 for them, which is going to be never? Or are you going to write these charts and, and work on your craft and maybe get your, the amount of time that you put into writing these things down to a reasonable level so that the 250 bucks or whatever you're making is worth your time? Oh, OK. And then the, it was fun watching the chipperness on his face just kind of diminish a little bit. Schadenfreude at the moment. Just kidding. He's great. Um, to produce and sell these things, that's another challenge. Uh, you know, it's, it's mostly word of mouth and personal relationships. Most of this career is personal relationships. Um, we can get into that later or maybe in the Q&A or something. Um, Kansas City Jazz Orchestra, or the huh, Kansas City As Orchestra. That almost looks dirty. The Kansas City Jazz Orchestra, there's a J here, I swear. Um, this is... A pretty unique thing. There aren't a lot of subscription-based playing at a large concert hall jazz bands in, in the world, and Kansas City has one of them. Um, we play at the Kauffman Center. Uh, we have uh, a, a concert season that's like you, you can know about way in advance, which is rare in the jazz world. Normally, it's just like you get a gig the week of the gig, and then you post on Facebook, hey, I got a gig, and people are like, I didn't know you had a gig. Um, this is way different. We have a concert season. Uh, we have a subscription base. Um, we have a board of directors, um, which is another level of interpersonal relationships for being a musician. Uh, we typically don't deal with boards of directors, so that's a new thing. Um, but I treat the jazz orchestra almost totally different um, then I treat my solo career. Um, I still have to practice, I still have to work, I still have to write, I still have to do all the things that I do for myself, um, but I have a lot more people to keep in mind, a lot more um, people sort of that are looking to be made happy by the organization. Um, and so that's kind of an interesting quirk that I did like 25 year old, Clint was, wasn't like, oh, you know what I'm going to do when I'm 37? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to serve a board of directors. So that's very weird. Um, we have to keep it fresh. We have to keep coming up with new concert uh, ideas and themes that are interesting um, and fresh. So that's kind of a fun challenge as well. Uh, the last thing that I do in this room of like a master photographer, I'm gonna be really sheepish now, but I, I have fallen into kind of a, a second career as a photographer. Um, this totally happened randomly because I just have always loved photography uh, and I've loved the idea of capturing a moment, um, you know, um, mostly for myself. And I would go around and I would take pictures of all my friends' gigs when I wasn't playing and, uh, and it turned in, in, into a thing. So one of the first things that I posted on Facebook that I thought was like neat enough to post was a picture on the right of the drummer Ryan Lee. Shortly after that, this magazine in Kansas City, Jazz Ambassador Magazine, Jam, um, they asked if I would do the photography for a cover story on the great Kansas City musician Bobby Watson. That ended up being the cover on the left, ended up being the cover photo for the magazine. And um, I didn't make any money off of that, but it was really cool. And it turned into uh, kind of this money-making career where, um, yeah, I, I've been paid for promotional reasons, for CD covers, for, for different things, all because I just did it for fun, which is sort of how the music career came about. But having the mindfulness of, uh, 
of turning that into not just a hobby, to turn it into a, a profitable part of my career has been um, really sort of a, a new thing for me, and, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, how I take pictures, why? Because I like pictures, because people need them. The morality of it is an interesting thing, because a professional photographer, which I suppose I am, but someone who only makes their living being a photographer, um, they, it's something that's very interesting to deal with because I have another source of career. I, my main career is being a musician. So I have tried to befriend a lot of professional photographers sort of to apologize to them that I'm also doing this as well. Um, goals, it's always to further your reach. It's always to get more people to um, engage with you, engage with your art. Um, but to do it with integrity and to do it well-meaning. I want to share my lens of perspective on the world through my music. And, and I do it um, with a lot of excitement and happiness and, and joy. And I want that to come across. When people come to see me play I want, or, or see me direct a band or whatever, I want them to feel like they made a great choice for that evening, that they feel better about themselves having come to listen to this music. Um, and that's sort of the, the angle I take at furthering my reach, just to do it with integrity. Um, I'd love to get a Grammy nom for the KCJO. We're getting close uh, to that sort of thing. I'd like to win a major grant, all the things that people like to do. I want to get better, yada, yada. Um, there are a lot of challenges to being an artist, as you well know. Um, we want to have these fans that will support us no matter what we do. Um, we always need, for musicians, we need to find places to play where people will come and hear us play. Um, we always want more money. We're making about the same per gig as we did in the 70s. I wasn't around then, but that's what I hear. I'm almost done. Um, and this is the last content slide, and we'll go ahead and hit questioning. So, first of all, thank you, Clint. Sure. Um, that was wonderful material to cover and talk about all the angles. Um, one of the things, too, uh, when we're talking about grants, he is going to visit our sister city, Germany, and that's through a grant through our sister city program, which John McGraw, board member of Gilded, um, and Jazz Alive founder, he helps coordinate um, one of the many things he has his hands in, uh, besides um, being a, a financial whiz. Uh, so, what other questions do we have for clients? Um, music compared to your photography experience? Oh, like all, all of it. I mean, I'm a musician. Yeah. Like I, I only make, you know, five thousand bucks a year okay. doing photography. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I, almost all music. And that's pretty much photography word of mouth. Yeah, I don't advertise out of the aforementioned like morals of the thing. You know, if people need something, they know that they can come to me. And it's it's a very specific thing because I think I can provide gig photography that other people can't just because I'm on the inside. I know what to look for. I know what musicians want themselves to look like. You know, in uh, in, in print. I, I hope so. Anyway. Are you managing your own social media now? And have it sounds like you. Yeah, um, I mean, I do, because uh, I have to. Um, typically, my, uh, my social media is more like personal, I suppose. Um, but in the last year or so, um, I have a full-time salary position with the jazz orchestra, and that's new. That's just recent, this season. So I've had to really delve into more of a professional social media for the jazz orchestra. And that's been an adventure to try and you know, decipher the algorithms and to figure out how to reach the people that we're trying to reach. So, but it hasn't really carried over to my uh, personal career. Yeah, and I, I kind of like Facebook to me, I mean, maybe because I got in early, but Facebook for me is, is like, I just, I want to, you know, say dumb things and talk about <laughs> the royals and take stupid pictures of my coffee or something, you know. Um, so you don't have a Facebook page that's exclusive to your music? Or your 
No, no. I, I have a, I mean, I have a, a website I have uh, for both of those, individually for, for, for photography and for myself. But Facebook for me is like, yeah, it's, it's, it's for me, I suppose. I still blast gigs, you know, and I still post photographs that have gotten me work, um, for sure. And I use it professionally, but I don't treat it only professionally. Because I think one of the things that people want um, is to be engaged on a personal level. You know, I think we don't do this because we want to reach a bunch of faceless humans. We, we do this because we want to connect with people. And my music is my music, and I stand behind it, and I'm very proud of it. But I think that people are coming to see you as much for your person as they are for you, that you can traverse a C sharp seven flat nine chord, you know. Something that's good with Facebook is, especially here in Kansas City, is I know the groups. There's like three music groups in general, and there's one Pacific Jazz, one Pacific Folk. Um, so, and then there's photography groups. So if you have a photography piece, you post it on the photography group, and um, you know, if you have a gig, post it on the, uh, the music groups, and then Especially if you're traveling, you can have an ad, you know, a $10 ad in that region. Yeah. If you're traveling, it, it's really good. Um, it means you can promote yourself in rooms for free or you know, small ads. Okay. Do you have a question? Does the jazz orchestra put out albums uh, regularly or seasonal? We, when I started in 2013, they had done two in the 10 years that, uh, of their existence. Um, we recorded one in 2015, I guess. Um, and I'm really pushing us to do more of that. Um, now, the, I mean, like Kelly mentioned, the idea of making physical records comes with its own sort of, you know, thing. But because um, we haven't really sold that many of the new record. Um, but it's, it's important for us because new recordings um, help us apply for better grants. You know, there, there's like a, a temporal uh, thing for a lot of grant writing. And, um, but, but I think also we, we need to be able to capture the, the feel of, of, of the, you know, the many generations of our, of our group. And um, so the goal is to record every two years. It's been two years now though, so. Does that help with the Grammy nomination? It, it's necessary for the, for the Grammy guru over here. His, uh, um, <laughs> David has been uh, very helpful in, in just helping us understand what we need to do. And, and honestly, we're not doing it um, right now. So that's a goal, um, a need for the, for the near future. I saw something about getting more fans or junkies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because of having, having music out that you don't necessarily have to come out to the concerts to, to hear. Right, and, and, and one of the challenges for me as a liaison between the music and the board of directors is to remind them that anymore the physical CD is not, we're not going to profit from this, but we need to come out with ways for, for people to engage with our product. Um, and so I've got some ideas in the next year using Patreon, um, some of the other things releasing a single, you know, which is weird in jazz, but I mean, like, I think it's necessary to have more pop sensibilities um, and 21st sensibility, century sensibilities. Um, so uh, have, I have a few things uh, in the bullpen uh, that we're gonna have to bring out here in the next year, but yeah. So maybe non-traditional recordings in the future, um, but, but definitely to do more of them. Okay, there's a question over here. Could you expand on the oh boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh boy. Well, I didn't get to get to the slide. Uh, the oh boy is like, oh man, like that's what we all need is content. Uh, more photos, more videos, more recordings, more Snapchats, and you know, more of more. And uh, it can be a little overwhelming, I think. Um, not so much for, for an individual. Um, I can come up with my own content, but for the jazz orchestra, we need to have a little bit different than just like, I mean, we need to have like the day-to-day -day personal, hey, how's it going? Here's uh, David in, in early, like eating a sandwich or something. Like you need those kind of colloquial or whatever the right word is, 
uh, things, but we need professional content, which is expensive, it's time consuming to get 18 people together for that, um, and it's, 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 a, it's an oh boy. That's, that's what I think every time I think of generating content for the jazz orchestra, it's just like the emoji with the big eyes. You know. okay, so we have a back here with a, has presented a little bit before. There's a uh, band coming to town this weekend, SF Jazz Collective. Yeah. And I had the great occasion of staying in Santa Cruz, California, and then playing north of San Francisco, sort of driving through San Francisco. And like they do on the plaza, every light pole had an SF Jazz Collective calendar. Or like a, not a calendar, but a, you know, their blah 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 sees and blah 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 blah. blah, blah, blah <laughs> you know, and I think that that uh, that what you both are touching on is very, very, very interesting. And since we are now an UNESCO jazz city, uh, I think <laughs> yeah, guys, you know, that, that concept, of what you're what you're talking about for the jazz orchestra in your own way, in your own mind. I mean. Both of you guys are very talented, and both of you have your own vision of what music is like. But there's no framework for yeah. music here. So if you were going to have, if, if you erase all the but, but, buts and, and, and do what you do, I would say it's arranging. Yeah. So how would you take the jazz orchestra and make it an international entity with that as your, as your construct? Oh, we're out of time. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, you know, we think about this a lot, and um, you know, the, the concept that, that at the Kaufman with Deborah and Bobby, you know, that thing was on billboards around town, and it was three straight days of. Um, there was a concert with Bobby Watts with all these guys, yeah, with the Kansas City Symphony, and that. I mean, I, I saw it everywhere that I went, and it was well attended for three days, right? And um, so how can we do that? How can we get the things on the light poles, you know? I don't know. I don't, I can't make them. I don't know how to make those things. <laughs> and I kind of don't like heights, so I don't know if I want to climb up and do it, but, but you're, you're right. You know, how do we, how do we? That's a huge question that I don't have an answer for. And uh, you were saying uh, there are certain things that you have to do to uh, put yourself in, in the league of getting a, a Grammy nomination. Uh, what, are, what are those things? I'm curious. Well, what is it? You, you, need to, you need to have sold a certain number of copies of your record. You need to have established yourself as being, um, a thing, right? Uh, David, I'm, I'm just remembering things that David has told me, so you should probably ask David <laughs> these questions. Um, and I think that you have to have a, some sort of, not an angle, but a friend of mine, uh, Ben Markley, um, who I recorded a record with, I've known since college, um, he had a great album. I think they got a Grammy nomination. It was the music of Cedar Walton featuring trumpet player Terrell Stafford. So they had a big name guest artist and a very specific um, concept for the record. That was their hook. That was their hook. Yeah. Um, we had one that I, I thought would, have, would be a hook, but it was 30 minutes long and it was not a hook. People don't want a 30 minute long thing. So, uh, um, yeah, just trying to trying to pull all of those things together, I think, is really. Is there any touring in your future with the orchestra? There needs it, it's like mobilizing a tank battalion to get this group out on the road, <laughs> but um, which I've never done that, so I, maybe that's easy. This is hard, uh, and yeah, there's we're we're trying to branch out. We've done a couple little runouts to different little towns, but um, but then again, you've got eighteen. Uh, I mean, the guys in the band are like middle-aged, older sort of people with some of them have day jobs and families and, and so forth. So getting 18 people out on the road for a month can be uh, a little daunting. 
Um, but it's something that, you know, we're, we're, we, we, there's a lot of things in talks. We, the, the, uh, the organization is, is in a kind of a transitory period as far as our worldview. Um, so when I say that there's a lot that's going to happen, that's just the truth. Um, but we're in the middle of the, like the, the process of, of putting all that stuff together. So hopefully it all comes off. I'm positive that it will. Um, I might, <laughs> might not. But. For seeing this too, we, the film industry is strong and, and it's getting stronger. Sure. Because um, they have some dedicated staff um, with the city. And they have a directory which they want composers to sign up on. Um, as well as, and I don't know if anybody knows any connection with the advertising agencies who do radio or, because I'm sure they need components now and then. Again, um, and that is um, really great for me. You know, so even um, to get one gig might be worth a lot of resignation. It's very specific, but it's also very time consuming. Um, my, my, personally, my time is like I don't have any more. Um, so if I, if, if I had the opportunity to write for a movie, I wouldn't be able to do it, um, which is which is part of the thing of being an artist. You know, if you are if you are working for yourself for your career, um, there's the idea of the lazy artist. I think that that's such a misnomer because people that succeed in art don't have any time to be lazy, you know, and. Um, yeah, but, but for, for people coming up as composers, if that's something that they want to do, Kansas City is actually kind of low-key really great for that because you can make those connections. And, you know, they just had the film festival. Um, yeah. Things like ArtsKC, though, I mean, like, that's really important. I, I know that that's paid off for the jazz orchestra a lot. Um, and we even underutilize that sort of thing. And I know I do, because I don't even use it. But um, there are a lot of great uh, organizations that help you promote whatever it is that you're trying to promote. And Kansas City is, Kansas City wants you to succeed, which is rare uh, for a city. Can you talk a little bit about what Jazz Alive is doing as far as the communication between musicians and venues, and how does that help pay? Um, <laughs> um, and bands. I, they do. Um, I will say that there are several organizations that are very well meaning in their um, attempts to spread the word of jazz to more people. And, Jazz Alive is one of them. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I know too. I'm, I'm part of the Arts Alive board, and we, we're supposed to, we, for the most part, we support local musicians, and that's our mission. So yeah. Every now and then, we have a big day come to town, and it's hard for us to resist taking our audience there. Um, so. I will say, from the artist perspective, um, organizations would. I think would do well, and I'm not saying this to be self-serving, but I think organizations would do well if they would have some of the artists in, in the cities um, lend some perspective. Um, and I, I think that, and then on the, on the other side of that, musicians would do well, artists would do well to reach out to the organizations so that there could be more of a, because I think you have a lot of, here's the organization, here are the artists, and then it's like, you know, magnets yeah. pushing each other away. And we feel that, that, that the challenge to keep artists on our board, and I think eventually we'll end up with a structure where we just have the artists advise the board. Yeah. Um, um, because it is, the boardroom and the stage are two different animals. Sure. So, Um, okay, so are there any, we're um, running out of time here, are there any um, last meetings or anything else we could do to help you as a community? Well, we all have so much to do. 
You know, we have so many things we can pick from. And I mean, like, I didn't, I never really even watched hockey until like I saw it on the HD TV and I was like, well, I want to stay home and watch hockey now because it looks good, right? Like we have so many, that's weird, but we have so many things that we can do with our time, with our recreational time. And um, I think as, as people doing something that we wouldn't normally do that isn't in our rotation is, is kind of exciting, but it's also, it's, it's difficult for us sometimes. It's like, ah, oh, it's Tuesday night, I'm gonna, whatever make it a ham sandwich or you know whatever um, the the jazz scene is 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 a thing in Kansas City where you can go out and you can listen to legitimately world class music any night of the week and um, we as a city don't do a great job of kind of proselytizing that um, at all so one thing I just like to suggest to folks is you know, throw that in your rotation. Go every, I mean, most people know about the Green Lady at this point, but there might be some other places. If you like, there's like a lot of gateways into other things. So say you like to go to the Green Lady, feel really cool about yourself in a dark room. I know I do. Um, well, maybe another night of the week, say, okay, I've been to the Green Lady. Maybe I'll go to the Majestic and hear Peter Schlam play. Or maybe I'll go to Westport Coffee House. We played there last night and Bobby Watson just showed up and sat in and like you could have seen Bobby Watson, you know, for, for nothing. So uh, finding new ways to uh, kind of pump your routine in different directions, I think is a really, is a really great thing for all of us to do. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you very much. Sure.